there, fella. Come back here and sign in, please. Hey, what's up, Servo? Sorry, company policy. What, since when? Well, since things have been getting too darn lax around here. You realize just about anybody could walk up here on the satellite of love here? Wander <laughs> but around? I live here. Hey, you can't expect me to keep track of every hey, face. Hey, let me just walk. drop these uh, Mole Man comics off with Crow. I'll be right back. Now, hold on a they... second. Uh, hello, Crow. What? Uh, we got a, uh, what's the M name again? Mike Nelson. We got a Mike Nelson up here. Are you expecting him down there on that side of the ship? Nelson, uh, yeah. Huh. Well, sign in, please. Sign in, too. All right. Uh, don't forget the time. Uh-huh. And 11 that's... 11.43. 11.43. Okay, I'll just drop these off. Be right okay. Back. Crow, here you go. Yes. All right. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sign out, will you? Oh, come on. This is ridiculous. Any policy. We'll, we'll, we'll be right back. 11.43. Wait. 11.44. 11.44. I think we better wake him up. He did a couple of back-to-back yeah. -back shits. <laughs> Servo! Ah! Uh, red alert! Red alert! Send backup! Someone's breaking into the vending machine! And I think he's getting 435 an hour. Yeah. Ah! Uh, Punch and John are calling. Ooh, hey. Uh, Clay looks better in a sweater washed in one. Let's see. Put the white cottons in with the denim where is that silk dress anyway uh put the towels in with the woolens and what's this here huh? what? oh nelson come on in laundry day down here once a year whether there's a full load or not <laughs> where was i oh yes um have you noticed that coffee houses are all the rage I've observed that coffee houses are bursting at the seams with pretentiousness. Therefore, you can't even be in a coffee house and not be pretentious. Now, to prove it to you, the unbeliever, I've sent along up some of the trappings of a coffee house, surly waitress not included. <laughs> Clay, where are your fine washables? I know I bought you more underpants than we have here. Give me that. Oh, come on. I think we can be in a coffee house without becoming pretentious. Sure, don't worry, Mike. We'll just sit here and prove them wrong. I don't feel a thing. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely not working. Nope. I've been recording my life in pastels. <laughs> the only question worth asking is, what am I going through right now? You, the white male, are my personal oppressor. Oh, my. Yes. Yes, she is so great. Mm -hmm. I saw her one-woman show. Uh -huh. Her soul cried out to me. So I'll take my rage and box it up yes, and yes. take it out with the trash. Yes, oh, yes. Oh, oh. Thank fantastic. you. Fantastic. Thanks a lot, Dr. Forrester. See what you've done? You've turned my robots into self-absorbed little poseurs. A white male middle-class power holder would say that, Mike. 
I'm not a white man. I'm Fascist. not even gonna, Don't call tell me <laughs> sister. Uh, uh, ah, booga booga ha! Oh, pardon my revelry, but I prove once again that Dr. Clayton Forrester is right, right, right. <laughs> well, your movie this week, Cow Sills, is called The Creeping Terror. <clears throat> and I just know you'll hate it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> hey, I'll show you creeping terrors. These grass stains. Well, don't you get it, Mike? The fact that we can acknowledge our own pretentiousness mm -hmm. says something about us as artists. But we're not artists. Well, maybe you're <laughs> not, Michael. Well, I don't think any of us. Oh, we got movies! Oh, this this thing, yes, I suppose I'll run. Oh, and now this. Hey, <laughs> oh, who put hair in the sink? That was me. Well, the things I can do with my spirograph. When spiders drink too much. I'm getting ready to get so scared. <laughs> These people saved with MCI. Wow. Nah, this is nothing a good wide tooth comb couldn't take care of. First transatlantic cable got all screwed up. You know, maybe this is a doorway to another dimension, not one of sight and sound, but of mind. Yeah, looks like the inside of Robert Morley's nose. Now, see, this is all I ever see when I look into a microscope. You guys, I tell you, I want to be filled with suspense, but uh, die, die. tonight at the Metrodome, monster design by John Lackey. Go, go the gorilla. Oh no, call. You know, a steady diet of staccato is a bit nauseating. Don't forget the Phillips. AJ, a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> the point of view of Helen Keller. Why, it's not creeping. This terror is clipping along just fine. A very uninvolving video game. This. Oh, ugh. I get car sick when I'm not in front. Oh. Darkness at the edge of town, all over town. Boy, am I terrified. You must be dead, honey. I could drive all night. What time is it? It's time for you to get a breath, man. Almost 4.30. Wake up, little Almost Susie. Almost We should be home in another hour. This man's name is Martin Gordon. He'll be home in an hour. The lovely girl beside him is Brett, his bride of two wonderful weeks. They have everything. I have nothing. In August. They're returning from their honeymoon to their home in quiet, peaceful Angel County, California. Yes, they did the Martin's nasty. Uncle Ben is sheriff of Angel County, and Martin is his senior deputy. Oh, I'm impressed. Martin has high hopes of succeeding his uncle when Ben retires. Creeping nepotism. But for now, <laughs> Martin has only the thoughts emotions and pride of a very happy newly married young man he told me that so. is his and he feels no man could ask for more <laughs> now without warning their honeymoon is to become a nightmare her mother showed up <laughs> <Boom>. <laughs> shortly here the nightmare will begin Be soon now nightmare time oh martin the ignition was a little oh, early martin, but saw the glowing rocket descent <laughs> it was reported to the sheriff's office by Jeff, the county forest ranger. Jeff reported to Sheriff Ben that a plane had crashed near Willow Creek and that he was going out to investigate. Bob ben Dole. said he would join him as soon as possible. Barney, Ben's junior deputy, was to summon medical aid and to see if he could rouse someone at the Air Authority in San Francisco. Barney smoked in the garage and look what happened. Meanwhile, the bride made her first meal. <laughs> oh, oh, you! <laughs> is the band tuning up? The guy and his age. Now that we need a narrator, he clams up. What's going on? Looks like Queen Latifah's hat. Ooh. I think a Walmart has landed. Oh, God. It's far out space nuts. Astro nuts. Oh, it's going to eliminate. Oh, look, the spaceship is cute. Oh, you little nose. 
While we're waiting, I might point out that Angel County has great opportunities for light industrial development. <laughs> Wonderful schools. A Chinese funeral procession. What? Oh, he's from Planet Dreadlock. The pontiff has arrived. I was afraid the alien was going to be goofy. <laughs> Ooh, man, it's bright. Should have brought my Ray-Bans. Wow. Ah, <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Ohio. Ohio. Gozaimasu. Ohio. Ohio. And don't come back. <laughs> Uh, I forgot my purse. Jeez, it's aerodynamically perfect. Oh boy, my back is killing me. I came to this planet because I heard they have Doan's pills. He's trying to carry off a look and he's just not tall enough for mm -mm. it. He's sneaking back to this bush here. Indiana wants me. Uncle Ben, honey. Must be an accident or something. Yeehaw! <laughs> Neat. Honey, not here. Boy, you newlyweds are randy. Now stop it in there! There's a plane crash down the road a couple of miles. We're gonna be a little short-handed till help gets here. <laughs> Pull around back of me. Go on about your marriage. Nothing happening here. This is the Army, Mr. Jones. Come along, both of you. Oh. Annette Funicello wore khakis. Get in, honey. You have the right to remain mine. Okay, now get out, honey. <laughs> so, anyway, we didn't see much of the Dells. But we saw the house on the rock, which was neat. <laughs> Still going. Well, it is creeping. You gotta give it that. Mm -hmm. Well, it turns out the creeping terror likes to frolic in the field. <laughs> I think he's attracted to that foliage. Hmm. Power walking just isn't his thing. Hey, if it landed right in Sunset Strip, he wouldn't be out of place. Am oh. I right here? <laughs> <laughs> I think he's self-conscious about his big old butt. Well, anyway. I like being married, although I do wish he'd go home at some point. <laughs> Gee, would you two stop making out? We've got an investigation to do. At the location of the crash, they discovered Jeff's truck, but Jeff himself was not around. Hmm. They proceeded with their investigation. Oh, I'm the narrator. I was just on break. I hope you don't mind. Yep, it's a truck, all right. It's in park. I'll put that in my report. Well, county government was just getting organized at this point. Well, I don't understand it, so let's start shooting. They looked at the rocket in utter amazement. That looks like a Ticonderoga number two. A puzzled Ben finally asked Martin what he made of the craft. Martin panicked and froze. It's no airplane. Ben never asked Martin another question. Could be one of our missiles. This county has missiles, sir? Or one of theirs. Shh, honey, no. Please? You could be right, honey. Don't think we have anything this big. I know that from our wedding night. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever it is, it appears to have lowered their intelligence level. <laughs> well, if I could find a windshield, I'd give it a ticket. <laughs> the sheriff. Where's that one guy, the, what you call it, narrator guy? Hey! Yo! Uh, buddy! Ben could not understand why the craft wasn't severely damaged. He started crying. Hmm? <gasps> Wait, I've been here. I'm dead. Apparently, Dan Blocker had been there. What kind of a man beast would wear this? This hat belongs to Jeff Peters. Oh, it's Jeff Peters' rocket. Huh? Jeff. Jeff. Hmm? Jeff, are you in there? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, can it wait? Pardon? Go back to my car and get my flashlight. 
I'll just pout. <laughs> so you're pretty serious about your husband? Uh, no, you're... Oh, uh, what's my time? <sighs> hmm? Ben, don't go in there. <laughs> you don't know what's in there. Go, 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 go. I think I hear him moving inside. Maybe he's hurt. Yeah, I gotta check under the movie. Oh yeah, there's a big mess under here. Jeez. Ben, please don't. Go. Oh. Ooh. Hmm? <laughs> that old gag, exploding flashlight. <laughs> you almost showed an emotion there. Uh, honey, we gotta go open the gifts at Mom's house. Well, he probably knows what he's doing. <laughs> this is the worst honeymoon I've ever... Oh, it's my first honeymoon. <laughs> I know he'd want us to take the sheriff's car. Car one, calling in. Reporting large steering wheel. Car one, calling in. I have some bad news and some bad news. Here comes the Ricori Suck Rapids High School Band! Within the hour, Martin's unusual call for assistance was answered by a special unit led by a Colonel James Caldwell. We're the special unit. Hello! <laughs> it took about an hour. They stopped at Hardy's on the way. Let's get going. There is a branch. This is not a drill. Let's go. Let's go. Move it over. Let's get going. Ah, uh, yes. Let's the go. days of rampant military spending. All right. Back on the truck. <laughs> Let's go. We push more logs before 9 a.m. than most people do all day. They popped a little Dave Brew back into the tape deck. Just by moving that tree, an owl has lost its habitat. Rosa Sharon's having a baby. Oh, somebody took our campsite. Okay, guys, don't frag me again. Sergeant, take one man and check it out. Yes, sir. Cut with Batchel. Okay. Uh, should we go? I think he wants us to go. <laughs> I'm scared. I'll go first. After he's done eating me, Joe, you go in. Sooner or later, indigestion will set in. More troops are sent in to fix the manifold. the original concept for the Iwo Jima sculpture. They're going to force Earthlings to read their gas meters. <laughs> ah, great. A race of ham radio operators. Yes, this can all be yours. Well, they've perfected the dial. Are we inside Television City? Yes, and back again in case we missed anything. The prices on these Kenwoods, the aliens must be insane. <gasps> it's conglomerate rock. Oh, please, just five more minutes, Mom. If there's a whole bunch of dials in there, I'll be so jealous. There's the aliens, shoot them! <laughs> The sergeant reported seeing an amazingly large creature in the aft section of the strange craft. He thought it was Boog Powell. Further reported that it was secured by a kind of metal harness, but that the creature could still move around <laughs> somewhat. And for that reason, they had not gotten too close to it. Plus, they're there yellow. no trace of either Ben or Jack. Or Akbar. The colonel ordered continuous guard duty around the spaceship and decided to set up a temporary military headquarters at the sheriff's office in town. It was a brilliant strategic maneuver. Yes, sir. Gag off. Back at the high school, shop class was canceled. By the next day, Colonel Caldwell <gasps> had the situation well in hand. Katie Lang. <laughs> he had called Washington and received his orders from the highest possible authority. God. He was to maintain tight security and to await the arrival of a Dr. Bradford, who had been on assignment at the Jodrell Bank Radio Observatory in England. Upon arrival, 
Bradford was to take complete charge of the operation. Constant he craving. He was the world's leading authority on space emissions Ugh. and worked out a series of systems that might lead to communication with other forms of life when, as, and if they were contacted. Preposition City. Martin was outraged by the government's intellectual approach to a monster that had already killed and caused the disappearance of his two close friends. Not since the Lincoln-Douglas debate. Caldwell tended to agree with him, but stated he had to follow his orders. It was a real interesting conversation. One of those orders was to suppress the news of the death of Ben and Jeff. Martin was appointed temporary sheriff, and all news intended for public consumption was to emanate from his office. W what's emanate mean, sir? The Air Authority issued a cover-up story that a plane had crashed and burned, and this was to suffice until the experts cleared up the mystery of the visitor from outer space. Then they went on to plot the Bay of Pigs invasion. <laughs> hey, welcome to the show. In a remote section of the county, the first of a series of tragedies took place. Two ladies? Tragedies that would have been avoided no. had the public been warned. Is she really going out with him? Oh, great. The monster's a voyeur. Mm. You know, this is how all teenagers see themselves. Poor kids. The unbearable whiteness of being. <laughs> I'll be there in about an hour, if you can just bear with me. <laughs> oh, Jerry, you wild animal. Huh? Oh, my God, it's my dad. <gasps> uh, we have to get out of here, honey. We only have an hour to eat, have sex, and then leave. Uh, come on, honey, let's crab walk out of here. <laughs> Could you at least not eat my bathing suit? It's brand new. You have a kind face. You're lucky you have thick hair. Uh -oh. huh? <laughs> well, he's not shy. You can say that much. <laughs> hey, if you could help me out by climbing in. Uh, that... <laughs> Twas beauty fed the beast. Wow. Always fun to cook for because he enjoys eating. Oh, the legs are always the last to go. Mm -hmm. Would you eat like a human being, please? This is so rude. Oh, need some seasoning. That's time I eat Norwegian. <laughs> Earth girls are greasy. <laughs> oh, wait. It's Lent. I swore off girls. Oh, well. I can't believe I ate the whole thing. You ate it, right? going down, but oh, then they just sit there. Uh. I love you, spaceship. Doot, doot, doot. Ah! Ah! Wow. The creeping newlywed. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. All you dials and gauges, I'm in charge. At this point, the director attempted an arty sort of shot. <laughs> That other monster must be the opener for this one. Oh, yeah. yeah okay. Andrew! Andrew Will Robinson! You know that California flag, the one with the goofy-looking bear? <laughs> uh, California grizzly bear. Yeah. They're extinct, you know. Ah, too bad. Uh, anyway, I was thinking, we are many, and yet we are one here on the Satellite of Love, just like California. And so I made us a flag. Uh, and Mike? Yes? Ah. Mike, would you help us raise it? Yes. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the satellite of love. Free, united, glorious, fruited, that brand by lobed orb, born of the loins of our founder, Jacques du Bourgeois, I can be the Farmer, claims adjuster, rebel, with alabaster symmetry and golden grains of Xanadu. One satellite, under God, or not, indirigible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you.
Oh, one last thing, Michael. Uh, check your nightstand. You'll find a cyanide capsule in case we're ever taken. I'm not taking cyanide. Oh, yes. well, aren't you one of us, Mike? Well, cyanide goes to my hips. Ah, <laughs> Torrie, <laughs> outsider, revengeous, provocateur! Do right you not know that you have Wait. only one life to live with the blood? Give me liberty or kill me! Hmm? Hey, my hat. Yeah, well, uh, we no, I'm not, no, no, no I'm not going While they were awaiting the arrival of Dr. Bradford, huh? Martin Bradford? instructed Barney, on Barney? advice Barney. from Colonel Caldwell, Colonel Caldwell, to plant in the local papers the papers. news that Ben and Jeff had taken off on a fishing trip and to Jeff. British Columbia. Right. The Colonel had impressed the bereaved families Colonel. with the necessity of maintaining secrecy. Hmm. And these brave relatives had agreed. After being beaten? Ooh. So, should we have at it again, honey? <laughs> Well, I think you're a wonderful acting sheriff. Despite Brett's inquiries about what Martin had seen in the spacecraft, he avoided specific details for fear of disturbing uh, her more than she was. What's she doing? If the truth were known, Martin was more than a little disturbed himself. <laughs> now cough, Shortly honey. Shortly thereafter, Dr. Bradford arrived. I said Dr. Bradford arrived. He was a much younger man than one would imagine him. I have no preconceptions. Martin, mm -hmm. I'd like for you to meet Dr. Bass. I've heard a lot about you from the Colonel. Well, nothing bad, I trust. Handsome, aren't I? Martin and his wife were in the original party that found the fallen craft. <laughs> I was sorry to hear about your uncle. Tough break. Which one of us is talking? Better? Yes, thank you. Huh? A couple hours of sleep, your world is good. <laughs> Bradford thanked the Colonel for his assistance and then asked to speak to Martin. Martin, have you noticed how young I Bradford look? questioned Martin about everything that had transpired. Well, we met and Martin got married. Martin did his best uh... to recall everything in precise detail. Down, but down, really down. didn't have much for him. The two soldiers that entered the rocket earlier had been summoned, and Bradford hoped to learn more from them. No, I'm only 35. Doctor himself <laughs> would not enter the rocket until the arrival of certain equipment. And fresh under things. From his discussion, it was apparent that the doctor considered this situation a magnificent opportunity for mankind. He celebrated with a Chesterfield. Felt that if he could communicate with the creature, it might be possible to advance human knowledge by years or even centuries. Or maybe just a few days. The spaceship alone signified an intellectual development far in advance of anything on Earth. Especially these two. When Martin asked him how he intended to protect himself from the creature, Bradford said not to worry. Then he, he slapped come him. here to be victimized either by his own or the creature's fear. Go ahead, punch me in the stomach. Come on. Oh, it's so fulfilling being married. There, our one plate. Oh, Martin invited the alien home for supper without telling his wife. No. Martin keeps a softball glove above the stove. Okay, now it's not going to look like meatloaf, but it is. She boils it. I don't know why. Yeah. Yeah, just eat. Now she's getting the breakfast dishes done just in time. Hi, honey. Pregnant yet? I'm pretty sure this is my house. I haven't lived here that long. Why don't you go in and check it out? Pretty. You grab the stereo. I'll get the silverware. Shh, give me the chloroform. Ah, uh, the Menendez brothers come home. <laughs> It's nice how they're so playful after the day's murder and mayhem. <laughs> I hope she comes out and blows them away. <laughs> wow. Love how you put the medicine cabinet in the living room. Hmm. Operation Mild Surprise is going really good. Boy, <laughs> when law enforcement gets playful, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, honey. Boy, three days, and it's still like they're just newlyweds. The deputy and his siren. Mm. <laughs> Officer third wheel. Oh. Wow, what happens when she cooks well? <clears throat> I could use a lozenge. <laughs> Did you bring home your longtime companion? Oh, hi, Barney. Thanks. We'll be right out. Well, that's all right. Just take your time. I won't listen or anything. I didn't know we had company. Look at me. I'm a mess. Oh, she's saucier than this town deserves. Don't be impolite. If I get the drink. Martin's lipstick was smug. Now he's talking, honey. Hmm. 
What do you have, Barney? Your wife. I. Oh, How about a bourbon and seven? Coming up. Would you get the seven, honey? Here, I am a bartender, and it's fun. Oh, it's all gone. How could that have happened? Mm -hmm. The young couple keeps a lot of booze on hand. Booze heals. Boy, honey, it's like we never run out of things to talk about. And there's your chaser. Fifties mm -hmm. entertaining at its most sophisticated. Uh, back when America was on top of the world. Hey, get a load of this clear beer. You had this yet? Barney, you should try marriage. <laughs> it would do wonders for you. Just try it. My answer is... Yes, Martin, Barney yes. and Martin had been bachelor buddies for years. But is it long? But now that Martin was settling down to marriage, they were slowly drifting apart. Mm. Barney, naturally, was still dating all the girls in town. And naturally. And understand why Brett and Martin didn't pal around with him more than they did. They hate cops. He couldn't comprehend that married life brought with it not only new problems and duties, but the necessary What's togetherness the of husband about? and wife He's as well. He's way script. He's a renegade narrator on the loose. Boy, let me that tell you, he's nuts. Over to dinner but quite he often. never plays by anybody's Boy, rules. But he her, gets results. He felt that he was. You want to get back to the script? Since time began, this change in relationship has probably happened to all buddies in similar circumstances. Life has its way of making boys grow up. Oh, yeah. And with marriage, Martin's time had come. His life was now Brett, a life mm. that he thoroughly enjoyed. Let's watch them enjoy each other. So, are you guys in the mood for Italian, or...? I guess not. Well, I, uh, I got all the girls in town waiting for me, so... Mm, Barney, don't go. Mm, mm, mm. The other guards don't understand you like I do, spaceship. Oh, shh. More later. <laughs> I can't resist. You show the monster a mirror, he goes nuts! I want that guy to get partially eaten and then spat out. Ugh, aren't you glad you used dials? <laughs> Hmm. Uh, not that great. Not like I thought it'd be. Hmm. Starman. Oh no, the thing is going for fluey, and the doohickey's going like the deal. Oh. You know, it's a federal law to keep your monster in a car seat. Bye, honey. I'll make it home from here. <laughs> the next morning, Betty Johnson, as usual, <laughs> blew a goodbye <laughs> kiss to her husband. But for the last time. Once a homecoming queen, always a homecoming queen. It's Bess Meyerson. It's not really a tent dress, it's actually a tent. <laughs> oh, did I have a baby while I was waving goodbye? Oh, oh we do, we do, boo boo. Ooh, Give me ten, soldier. <laughs> well, how's my little boat anchor? Yeah, it'll be really interesting dealing with this crap for the rest of my life. Poor baby. Let mommy take your temperature. No, no, get lost. Uh, I don't think I want to watch what's about to happen here. Mm -mm. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. No way. Stop. Stop right there. Please stop. Mm -mm. Don't. Wait, wait. Oh, no. You're going to put that where? I'm not sick. I'm fine. Look, I'm feeling better. Thunk. Oh, he'll pay for this. Maybe it's my hair that's setting him off. Hmm. Oh. Well, at least we're not hearing Bruce Willis make snide comments. Yeah. Mm, true, true. The first director to realize the dramatic potential of a rectal thermometer. Hmm, a little dirty. Might want to consider flushing the system. Poor baby. You'll feel better soon. How about picking him up or feeding him? Hmm. Well, that's done. Now I have the whole day to myself. Hmm. Well, my love deprivation experiment is going well. He's such a bright and cheery baby room, huh? Hmm. Oh, Daddy's home. <laughs> oh, man, it's hot in here. Hey, Phil, which way are you going? Everybody in line back there? Yeah. At Moe's Carpets, we're cleaning out our inventory. It's a chapel-length veil. <laughs> mm -hmm. Meanwhile, in a Kurosawa film... Well, here's another really satisfying part of my day. Hanging laundry. Maybe I should just hang myself. 
<laughs> Aren't you supposed to wash them first? <laughs> yeah, you can leave babies alone for a while. They're usually okay. <laughs> so, now it's trying to become a taut domestic drama, eh? No, they're just downwind from Los Alamos. Ignore it. Ignore it. Just keep hanging clothes. It has nothing to do with your life. Huh? Oh, gag. She had that pinned to her tongue. What? Is that a less dreary existence I see out there? I'm in the hydrangea bush. Well, now, this is a very interesting situation. Yeah, so... The bushes mock me. A lot of aphids this year. Big ones. Mean. Wow. Hey, those are power lines. <laughs> oh, it's a close encounter of the third kind. <laughs> I gotta get more colors. When Tom Wolf's wife does the laundry. <laughs> Maybe if I just uh, zip by, she won't notice me. Hi, <laughs> gate was open, just let myself in. Can I borrow some downy? Okay, come on over. Just don't take your shirt off. Oh, I hate this town. Take me with you. <laughs> oh, Jerry, no! Can I get some service here? The poignant laundry shot. Oh. Tell me more secrets, little rocket friend. Shh, shh, shh. Wow, the monster's drier. But, but turn it off, you're flooding it. So the kids have to have every appliance in the house on. Well, Maybe the narrator got eaten. How many shots of gauges do you need in any one movie? Never have enough. Duh, I should have gone to DeVry instead of Harvard. What's this guy? Take this. the hell am I doing anyway? Yeah, I'll just adjust this so I can watch my stories. There, that's it. You killed it. Okay, kids, please disembark to the right and then follow the exit signs. Ah, oh, that's a keeper. Meanwhile, Opie and his therapist go fishing. Son, you and I should really check out the village folk scene. Grandpa, can I go for a walk? All right, but stay close by. <laughs> hey, he's a Matryoshka doll. There's six more of him inside. <laughs> let's see, we'll put this here. No, no, over there. There, let's go. They have a really good strategy of not alerting anyone. <laughs> Grandpa's psychosis is ruining this trip. Seems like he's in a good mood now. He's part of the really big brother program. <laughs> I, I just hear a monster licking its lips. Hmm. Uh, wow, cannabis. I hmm, guess the monster isn't as big as we thought. Ah, yes, the beautiful lizard quartet. Oh, please, I haven't eaten anything in days. Oh. Cruelty to small animals is one of Little Bobby's few outlets. So tell that road, hey, go. Huh? Tell that, huh? Bobby, while you're up there, grab me a porterhouse, too. Boy, he's abdominal riff. Bobby. And a baked potato. Bobby. And a cake, too. Some Yoo-Hoo. Don't make me stand up, Bobby. No, I can't. Let's see, I'll put it right here. No, right here. This is a portrayal of deep clinical depression. Suddenly, it's wild strawberries. Let's see, stick, sharpen, Grandpa. Mm. Do I smell bacon? Bobby has often observed his parents at night. Bobby doesn't have a lot of friends. Uh-oh, here comes the most challenging scene in this movie. 
Bobby! I'm the Pirate King! Huzzah! Yule Gibbons has got to cut back on the pine nuts. Bobby! Wow, Bobby really does not want to go fishing anymore. He has a manic interest in nature. Oh, the whole world is this guy's salad bar. And Bobby's hopelessly inbred synopses slowly begin to fire. Maury Firestein, kosher game warden. Oh, wait, his name's not Bobby. Uh, Steve! Steve! You know, making Alan Sherman an action hero was not a great idea. Mm -hmm. No. Bobby. 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 Oh, Bobby shed his antlers. <laughs> kill, kill, kill. Bobby, go, 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 go. Kill, 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 kill. kill oh, kill, kill. always make room for this guy. Bobby. Have you seen Bobby? Oh, no, probably not. <laughs> no, no, trust me, I'm all gristle. <laughs> I taste gamey, believe me, don't, don't, please. Ironically, now the fish are biting. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, he's making his own broth. Let the current take you away. Swim! Bobby? And the world has one less Santa. <laughs> Meanwhile, in second hour bio... Within 48 hours, Dr. Bradford had closely examined the creature and the spaceship... I have closely examined the creature. ...and a number of conclusions. He was sure the creature had come from beyond our solar system because it adapted to our environment so quickly. And no planet or dead star near us has conditions similar to the Earth. It was a half-cocked theory, a but... special interest to him was the hull of the ship. The hull of the ship. It was composed of an alloy unlike anything uh, human alloy? science had ever encountered. Not buying it. The doctor had run a number of tests on the metal, there, it's but its molecular dark. structure oh. remained a mystery. Because there was no food on board, Bradford presumed the creature had been in a state of suspended animation, <laughs> particularly because it had survived the trials of re-entry and impact survived without apparent harm. The... So far, he had no success in communicating with it. But he had not yet exhausted all possibilities. Like candy and stockings. On a more subjective basis, he had the curious feeling that the creature did not want to communicate with him. He just wanted to eat. <laughs> Such a confession on the part of this eminent scientist made Martin feel quite apprehensive. And dumb. <laughs> then a cool front moved in, a low-pressure area out of Canada. <laughs> Love American style. Gypsy, I think you're right. Hit it, Camba. Mr. Martinson, please! But I just want to dictate to you. <laughs> well, I'm finally going to propose to Debbie. That's great. Let's see the ring. Oh, no, the ring is stuck. I guess we'll have to get married. <laughs> <laughs> But I thought that... Well, I thought that you would... Well, this has all been a big misunderstanding. I love you. So take that, love, American 
Muppet style? Now, I hope they have the sense to take it off the air and the courage to show this parody. And they say there's no hard-hitting satire on television anymore. I <laughs> dare them to show it. <laughs> whoa, 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 <laughs> Come see the monster. Don't you ever miss it. While on a routine call to pick up instructions from Colonel Caldwell, Martin received an urgent message from Barney. I love you. Barney was at Willow Creek. He had responded to a phone call from a frantic Mrs. Brown. She's got a lovely daughter. Her husband and grandson had gone fishing and were long overdue. I mean, love. Barney was instructed to organize a search party locally and to report the results to Martin. And to organize a discussion group. Because of security regulations, he was not to come near the area of the spacecraft. Or anybody's area. Martin said he would join Barney later if he could. And watch him and his wife make kissy face. <laughs> they should put a door on the outhouse. I gotta quit doing this. I can't control it anymore. Oh, I'm a sick man. Angel Sheriff, this fall on NBC. Acting on a hunch, Martin decided to see for himself if the monster was still there. It was. Case closed. Bradford had installed TV cameras inside the spaceship <laughs> and was testing the creature's reactions to sound, light, electricity, color, and air pressure. And the Red Skelton Show. When Martin asked him if he had any luck in communicating with the beast, he hit Bradford him. confessed that he hadn't but would try again when certain data was returned to him from computer processing. You like me, Bradford? It was at this time that Bradford came up with a frightening theory, mm -hmm. namely that the creature might be a product of engineering, mm -hmm. the same engineering that built the spaceship. And Dome what Holmes. What he didn't understand was why some form of communication had not been built into the creature. Martin was out of his depth now. When Martin asked him if this weren't something to worry about, Bradford said no. Don't hit, please. Probably his own failing at not being able to establish communication. I'm just paraphrasing here. It seemed to Martin that if Bradford's theory were correct, humanity might be in grave danger. From a Hoover floor model. Bradford dismissed Martin's fears by pointing out that the creature was not exhibiting any signs of violence. Oh, aside from Besides, eating people. It was firmly secured by the harness. Hmm? That afternoon in Muncrief Park, a group of neighbors got together for a hootenanny. <laughs> <laughs> and Maria taught the Von Trapp children to sing. Uh, Trini Lopez puts on an impromptu In performance. Fact, I am glad this is my favorite part, listen. As that There's only one stage of grief in this town, and it's acceptance. I thought Dave Van Ronk was going to be here. Ah, this place is a ripoff. And yeah. Come on, Evelyn, let's I die, blow. I try Send help. Her, and I, really I admire their willpower. Try, but I'll still think I don't know what a lovely spot to get killed. <laughs> oh, no, the monster did a doo doo. Wow. <laughs> These hoot nannies just get me going. I love Jim. Ah, the young Peter Graves Chronicles. What is it? Just our impending death. Oh, no, they've wandered onto a federal monster reserve. <laughs> Make the leaves go away. No, they're about to be attacked by a point of view shot. Uh, no thanks. We don't want any carpet. Thank you. We'll wait here while you kill us. Uh, watch the hair. Making out kills. Who dare ruin my folk fest? Oh. <laughs> El Kabong will kill it. You stay there. Stay calm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now someone is finally standing up to the monster. That's right. Only Tom Paxton can save us now. 
finally putting his guitar to good use. Have the army send in bass and drums. Ah, years later, Pete Townsend would perfect this. <laughs> Did anyone in the 50s ever think of running? Oh, now this, this is outright gluttony. He's depressed, so he just goes out and eats some campers. Like a giant pothole, wouldn't he? Today, the music world mourned the guy who owned this guitar. In response to a multiple missing persons report, Martin and Barney searched the countryside for the group of picnickers. I could fix it. The only trace they found of them was the remains of a guitar one of them carried. And some potato salad. The wholesale disappearance of a large group of people, coupled with earlier missing persons reports, led Martin to only one conclusion. Folk is dead. There must be another monster, and it was on the loose. The filmmakers went back to this building every time they needed the shot. Mm -hmm. y yes, Mother. Yes. The yes, Colonel mother. listened to Martin's theory and, after consulting with Bradford, decided to call Washington. He was told to follow his own good judgment, uh -oh. but under no circumstances was he to alarm the populace. The Colonel decided to organize a countywide search. And bake Martin's sale. Martin's assignment was to search the north end of the county. Mm. You know, he needs to walk faster to maintain an adequate heart rate and burn off all those calories from those people. His wife, on the other hand, can eat anything and not worry about it. Mm -hmm. Hate her. Now, uh, you know what would work for him now? A, kind of a low-rise pump rather than those Birkenstocks. Oh. I can't believe it. I'm hungry again. While Martin and Brett were engaged by the search, the monster was moving toward the community dance hall. Where a close-knit community mourns its dead. Oh. Well, I assume the authorities aren't keeping anything from me, so let's dance. Uh... Mm. Yeah, here's my torso. Torso, here's your torso, look at torso. Just sing my torso. Sing her torso, torso, look at torso. Timothy Leary and Estelle Parsons, get down. Mm. Yeah, I'm surprised we got this good a turnout with everyone being dead and all. Mm. You know, everyone was 40 back then. <laughs> Boy, these Huey Long fundraisers are great. Hmm. Apparently, the monster ate the decorating committee. Mm. It's just a good thing drugs came along. I'll say. This town desperately needs a leather bar. Or even a dairy bar. The mid-afternoon dance is a big success. You can see why the British invasion was so easy. <laughs> there is just plain no need for sex. We'll all be just fine without it, dear. That's right, you tell him, Sarah. <laughs> this dance is a tribute to the treble clef. You know, even the A.V. Club laughs at these guys. <laughs> they dance to forget their desperation. If my deepest, darkest despair had choreography, this would be it. Mm. Sponsored by Tom McCann. Hey, no street shoes on a gym floor. Ooh. Your parents before you were born. <laughs> uh, hey, there's a hair on the... Hey, there's a hair on the thing, Take would one. you... Thank you. And as ever, the Baptists remain on the sidelines. This was the unsuccessful pilot for Soul Train. <laughs> well, I can see why they need a rest. Yeah. Wow. Towel down. Hey, where'd the tablecloth go? <gasps> Shh, don't bother it. They're so beautiful in the wild. Yes. I need to find somebody who is rich in antioxidants. Must get to dance before punch runs out. Will the monster marry Susan? And what about their baby? Tune in tomorrow and find out. Okay, one more dance, but it'll cost you. How good you're playing my request. Now, girls, I can't marry both of you.
more drink and he'll be attractive. Oh, I'm embarrassed for them. I don't know, she's a divorcee. I hope I didn't overdress for this thing. Ah, oh, well finally, here comes someone with rhythm. on his bait. <laughs> here comes some juicy rump, a little more rump here, a little more rump there. Stood up by a monster. Oh, sure, I'll meet you here. But I, uh, monsters are all alike. The hell with This is not jazz. Come on, Rita. I've had enough of that guy. Sorry, folks. Should have told you about the subplot. Even caught me, the narrator, off guard. Hey, David Carradine. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Honey. Dave. Oh, he's been a bull drunk, and now suddenly he's surreptitious? <laughs> oh, his date is so humiliated <laughs> right now. Uh, Susan, I, I can't seem to stop. Help. No. I gotta get in there, it sounds so hot! Hope I didn't miss the part where they throw the bouquet. Everybody okay back there? Why didn't I park closer? Hey, even the chemistry teacher can shake his booty. <laughs> it's Oscar Schindler and the Boston Pubs. It's an all chaperone dance. I've got the music in me. Come on, take me to Funky Town. <laughs> mm, never eaten a whole prom before. But Patty likes to rock and roll. A hot dog makes her lose control. Mm. Woo. <laughs> wow, uh, behind her, it's out of control. It's got a mind of its own. I don't blame him for ogling. What are you looking at? <laughs> ah, the DTs, get these bugs off me! Oh wait, I'm a bug. <laughs> <laughs> he's a maniac and he's dancing like he's never danced before. Man, if I don't score tonight. I know, I know, it's a cheap suit, but it's all I had. <laughs> Why is everybody looking at me? My God, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, Mr. Monster, we need to stamp your hand. Music's better. What the? What? Wow. Hey, enough with the subplot. I'm trying to attack you guys. Kino Reeves has it out with Ed Bigley Jr. Disgusting race to think I've been eating these clowns. Uh, anybody sitting here? Everybody leave in a slow, leisurely manner. Anybody want to dance? Come on. Hey, everybody, look at my tracheotomy. Wait, I'll do the cigarette trick. <laughs> What's the panic? He's on cleanup committee. Excuse me, is this the way to the cafeteria? It's so hard to be the new kid in school. Mm. Are you sure you're not looking for the Feinberg wedding, sir? Just making my way to the buffet, folks. You guys going to Todd's? I'll meet you there. I'll catch up. Sheer energy. <laughs> Please, I'm not ready for an open mouth kiss. Hey, that's a very cool in here. 
meanwhile, in a totally different movie at a completely unrelated high school. Sam Scratch? What is this? Fight, fight. Doesn't anyone eat anymore? I'm just gonna sit in with the band for a few. Oh no, oh god, oh, oh hi Debbie. <laughs> Come see ya. How are they gonna explain this in the Angel County Herald? Oh, I'm done. I've gotta push myself away from the table. I know what happens. Now pig's blood is gonna be dumped on his head. Uh, could I see a dessert menu, please? Be kind of ironic if he had a tapeworm, huh? Yes. Uh, d d where's Frederick, our usual maitre d'? Uh, go ahead, honey. He's being friendly. Now, now he's just gulping his food. This is. I think this is kind of a weird little turn on for the director. Oh, hi, Joanne. Scoot over. I love you, you big lug. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. What's great about this monster is that he can pretty much be his own sleeping accommodation. I knock it off in there. Settle down. You're kicking my... Oh, no, he's choking. Someone give him the Heimlich maneuver. He died with his bowling shoes on. Well, hello, ladies. Monsters think we're weird because we chew our food. <laughs> you know, this monster was up for a party naked lunch. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. oh, I need some juice or something. Man, people are salty. Chris Isaac. Yep, break time, honey. While Martin and Brett were taking a break from the search, a call came through which confirmed Martin's theory. This movie sucks. Colonel Ooh. Caldwell told them of the monster's attack at the dance hall. In graphic terminology. His troops now had orders to destroy the monster, and he asked for Martin's assistance. Martin declined. Martin said he would join the colonel as quickly as possible. Were it not for his trick knee. John. Marsha. John. Marsha. John. Marsha. John. Marsha. Mm -hmm. Say what you will about this planet. They throw great dances. Oh. You know what I could use? A mint. Ah, <laughs> oh, they clear cut a virgin forest so his people could make out. Oh, me. The monster next appeared in Lover's Lane. To a sold out crowd. Anyone who experienced that catastrophe and survived would never go there again. And those who did not survive such a catastrophe also would not go there again. Okay, now this time I'm going to give you guys a head start, all right? Now, trees aren't that great after you've had people. Mm. Uh, what? Lover's Lane eight miles? Oh, man. Oh. Oh. Uh. Oh, he's a little dizzy. He ate too much of his Halloween people. Hun. And just who am I supposed to make out with? Oh, oh no. In the heart of the Beast Puppet Theater is here. I'll just sneak up and surprise them. <laughs> Tomorrow. Mm. Honey, I think we've got creeping terror. Not in front of the monster, dear. Marissa Tomei. This is too easy. <laughs> uh, uh, Mike? <laughs> well, you see, when a monster and a small car love each other very much... Wow. They... People melt in your mouth, not in your car mistaken the car for a lady monster who wow why doesn't the monster take the car so he can get his work done faster <laughs> well that was a new twist and an old trick eh ah wow well, that was good now for the people in the oldsmobile <laughs> and the beta kappa chi float wins the homecoming parade <laughs> uh, he always comes to lover's lane alone Mm -hmm. 
Well, if that don't beat all. <laughs> I wouldn't have eaten you anyway. <laughs> oh, should I? I've eaten so much already. Well, Thanksgiving only comes once a year. <laughs> Creeping part is apt, but the terror part is just not happening. <laughs> He's doing his Walter Brennan impression, Dick. Get out of the way. I want to see the smoochers. He's definitely a people person. Thanks. I'll return it with a full tank. An official jalopy. <laughs> I'd like to see your license and registration, please. Hey, can I get a lift? I, I got a doctor's appointment. A hideous growth, and I gotta have me removed. <laughs> Two bulls, one. Two bulls. Huh. Well, God, that was the last straw for that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to give him a push start. You got it in gear, right? Jackson Pollock disapproves. He's tenacious. You got to give him that. Ah, it looks like you're gonna need some transmission work. Oh dear! Lift with your legs now. Mm, unsafe at any speed. Ugh. <laughs> Those kids with their chinos and ah. They didn't pay a lot for that detailing job. That monster would make a really cool fort. Ah, comfort food. I like the meaty filling. But if they're not dead, they can't just crawl into his mouth like the others. Problem. Oh, great date, Steve. <laughs> Wait a minute. Here I come. <laughs> Strike a gun. Can't get this vending machine to work. Just want a Clark bar. I hate this. I can see him, but I can't get to him. Oh, no, my three stomachs are growling. Oh. It's really more trouble than it's worth. Hey, give it up. Jesus, like a Brazil nut, there's no getting into it. Well, they're not going to be as fresh as I like them, but what the hey? Right out there. <laughs> he's just not as nimble as he used to be. I think he's put on some weight or something. <laughs> Gucci, Gucci. Please, God, I'm only 17. Mm, um, okay, I'm just gonna have these two, then first thing Monday morning, I'm going on that diet. You know, ever since the divorce, he's learned how to cook for himself. Oh, he likes it fresh out of the can. Jeez, you know, now I'm not even that hungry. He's just plain taking advantage of the all-you-can-eat buffet on Earth. Mr. Monster, you've got some leg on your face. <laughs> Check this out. <laughs> wow, the monster's got great gams. Okay. <clears throat> oh. Oh. oh, you all comfortable in there? Yes, thank you, Mr. Monster. Time to undo my pants and go watch the football game. Oh. You know, humans really stick to my dental work. Oof. And I bet his breath really stinks. Especially after he eats French people. <laughs> what is with you and the it's French a joke. people? Oh, yeah, that's oh, funny. The monster's got to be full by now. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't have said Hey guys, finally got my stereo system set up. This looks pretty substantial, Mike. What kind is it? 
Oh, it's nothing much. You got the Nakamichi CD1000 transport, fiber link to the PS Audio 20-bit uh, uh, DA converter. Mm -hmm. Of course, that goes to my Bryston straight line preamp out to the Carver 400 watt mono blocks and uh, over to the DCM Time Window 7s. Yeah, sounds great, Mike. As for me, I've got one of them Gold Star bookshelf jobs. Yeah, <laughs> boombox is enough for me, Mike. You disgust me. Huh? Come on, guys. Haven't you ever heard a good system? Get into the sweet spot here. Now listen to this. Come on. As the kids say, this is going to blow your mind. Mike, that's the music from The Creeping Terror. Yeah. Sounds pretty lame, Mike. Yeah. Oh, come on. Listen to the definition. The imaging is plenty of error around the instruments. Uh, here, let me replay this part. Yeah, replay that. Listen to that, huh? Huh. Yeah, neat. Well, you know, Mike, I think we're going to listen to it from uh, over here, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh look, huh? there's the sweet spot <laughs> over sweet here. Hey, <laughs> ah, fine. Who needs you? Meals on Wheels. Hmm. Now to make my speedy getaway. <laughs> it was almost an hour before Caldwell learned of the monster's devastating new attack. <laughs> Colonel Caldwell <laughs> wasted no time ordering his men into action. Men, action. <laughs> it was at this point that Bradford interceded. He demanded that the monster be taken alive at all costs. The colonel's protests about the dead and missing made no impression on Bradford. Dead, missing, so what? Caldwell <laughs> conceded to the point of assuring Bradford that they would not destroy the monster if they could avoid it. Well, because monsters are people, too. Hmm? Get on with it, Lieutenant. Pull it out, man. Actual dialogue startled everyone. Yes, I am handsome, thank you. God, he is attractive, isn't he? We're from the set of combat. Uh, can we help? Yeah. Everything he eats goes to his hips. Mm. Then Broderick Crawford arrived. Well, it's cowboy day down to the precinct. When Martin's party arrived and offered to help, the colonel told them enough lives were being endangered. They were to be part of the second line of defense to be used only if necessary. Also known as dessert. <laughs> Guys, don't tempt me. I'm stuffed, please. Well, I guess one more wouldn't hurt. Come on, get in. Hey, come on, I got you. Lay down. Hey, I see Judy in there. Apparently, just hoping it would go away didn't really work. They tampered in God's domain. The monster's got corn smut. 
Uh, didn't work when we shot James Beard either. The words nya nya were clearly heard. <laughs> Here we come. Wait, wait, you don't understand? Let me tell you why, your family. Jeez. This is an intervention for his eating disorder. Look, we have some Susan Powder tapes we want you to look at. <laughs> the photographer fell on them. Hog pile. Well, golly. Diaper me. Diaper me, please. I need diaper. <laughs> what kind of memorial do we build to those guys, eh? The sergeant, a shaken man, returned babbling about what had happened. <laughs> realizing the full danger of the situation, decided he had only one means left to stop the monster. Renee. Renee? She... Now Bradford made a drastic move. He Acting gestured. On his superior authority, he forbade Caldwell to destroy the creature. He forbade? The colonel, more concerned with saving human lives than advancing science, told Bradford to go to hell. Pardon my French. Get out of my way. I'm going to put some of those little Vietnamese peppers in my pocket and let them eat me. <laughs> okay, Baggy, now you'll meet my creeping terror. Um, Mr. Monster, could you spit out our rifles, please? <laughs> Hamilton, Joe Frank, and Reynolds attack. Hey, come on, come on, you want a piece of me? Oh, you do, actually. <laughs> oh, he broke a heel. Guy's hmm? wearing maternity pants. <laughs> uh huh. Foiled him with crabgrass. Ooh. <laughs> Something sort of happened, huh? kind of. Yeah, there's a. Mm. Just tell me, am I inside the monster? Mm. 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 <laughs> oh, you fragged yourself, you knucklehead. Uh, oh, you were there, and you, and you. Twas Buford killed the beast. <laughs> this has been the goofiest week of my life. Hmm? What the? Hey, this is pleather. Oh, man, he's going through his wallet. Oh, there's $5 in here and a pass for cheapskate roller rink. Look at that. Bang monsters from Radio Shack. Huh? Richard Kimball, man on the run. <laughs> oh. Safe. He slides <laughs> like Ron Santo. <laughs> Where's he going in such a hurry? Well, maybe his beeper went off. Maybe you'd better follow him. He may need help. You go ahead, Mark. I'll stay with you. Okay. Come on, Special Agent Sweetheart. <laughs> Here on K-Roll, all roller rink music all the time. This portion of our film brought to you by Ensco Windshield Wipers. And go wipers. When you're wet, they wipe you. Now, only after the monster died did people think of running. May I dab tenderly at your forehead, Steve? Ray Manzarek on organ. Thus the chase scene begins. <laughs> so, is this a silent movie all of a sudden? He's just sort of panicked back there. I don't know what happened. Here in White Valley, 
Mm. Just keeps thinking about those two scoops of raisins, huh? Gotta find a petting zoo. There are times when a man needs the touch of a llama. Now somewhere in the Black Mountain Hills of Dakota, there lived a young boy named Rock Raccoon. Enjoy my profile, won't you? Oh no, a nuclear blast! <laughs> When the agents reached the Spawn Ranch, Manson and his followers were nowhere to be seen. This is Andy Warhol's driving. I had to get here. I'm not sure what here is, but I'm here. Forget the password, let me in! I am sleeping. Jeez, did I leave the monster on? Whoa! Oh. Oh. Something happened, I guess. Oh, oh, bad thing burned bad. Oh, stingy pain. Oh, put me out. Oh. I'd walk a million miles for <laughs> one of your smiles. <laughs> Mommy. The explosion loosened the harness on the monster and allowed it to escape. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And so our tale begins again. Oh, no. The filmmaker sadly misread the demand for a sequel. Guess he wanted a man witch, huh? Sorry. Too bad the monster didn't land in Thailand. He'd have heartburn by now. Oh, no, with the food jokes. <laughs> Listen, he sounds like screaming Jay Hawkins. <laughs> Jeez, would you just come and get me? Let's get this over with. I'm lying here. Oh, look at that. He's going to be walking soon. Oh, honey. This might be rather cynical on my part, but I put it to you that that is the same monster. Oh, God, no. Oh, it's not possible. Oh, the humanity. Uh... Oh, I have a question. Uh, you're going to eat me, aren't you? Now, now, this guy won't be eaten because the monster hates Cajun food. Oh, please. Blackened. <laughs> Blackened you. Think I hit on something. Stay away from his mouth. Don't crawl inside of it. That's it. <sighs> hey, a four-leaf clover. Suddenly, he suffers from a narcolepsy seizure. No. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, rascal, no. No, not now. Uh, I need to ask Phil something. Could you barf him up, please? <laughs> Sorry, he just darted out in front of me. Bradford just squirted all over the place. Wow. Here, let me give you my insurance information. <laughs> Oh, hi. Martin tried to help the doctor, but there was no time. Bradford told Martin what he had just confirmed. I'm dying. These monsters were highly specialized test animals. They were, in fact, mobile laboratories <laughs> that consumed human beings in order to analyze them chemically, uh -huh. undoubtedly to detect weaknesses in the human species. Oh, undoubtedly. He told Martin that the information fed into a computer in the spacecraft Further, he added, now that both monsters were dead, the computer would activate a transmitter to send the results into outer space. Uh -huh. Martin knew what he had to do. Become a huge Larry Storch fan. He'd follow him around the country seeking his autograph. He'd be an expert on Larry Storch, able to answer any question about Larry Storch. So if he gets killed or anything, you want to have coffee sometime? Martin sometime? entered the spaceship, he heard the transmitter generator kick on. Whoa. Jeez, I should know this. I went to refrigeration school. Hey, hey, there's bullets in the other end of that thing. <laughs> it's a closet Luddite, this guy. The super tough alloys of the spacecraft were not even dented by Martin's hemline. <laughs> you never love me. You never love me. Another frustrated IBM PC user. <laughs> Stupid old machine. Stupid. 
and you can just unplug it. The spaceship's got a supporting beam there. Why don't you just ask the spaceship nicely to go away? So, how many of him do you think it would take to screw in a light bulb? <laughs> All of them. <laughs> hey, hey, take it easy. Roger Corman needs to use this set later. Finally, the failure of his wedding night comes crashing down on him. Martin's upset because the thing is transmitting bad stuff about him. <laughs> uh, yes, the Jack Nicholson Courteous Driver School. After his release, Stacy Coons gets a job at Cray Computer. <laughs> you thought you were off the hook. You get back here and take it like a man. <laughs> there! <laughs> What do you think of that? <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to lash out. Please forgive me. <laughs> As the transmitter stopped, Martin felt sick. No. Evidently, all the information had been transmitted. Oh. Well, we're dead. World's over. My fault. Sorry. <laughs> hey, Crispy, hands off my wife. On Martin's return, he confessed his failure. Forgive me, Bradford, he for I failed. He slowly asked Bradford what was in store for humanity. Bradford was pessimistic, but implied that maybe all was not lost. He had coupons. After all, he told them, the vastness of the universe is incredible. Hmm. If these monsters had come from its outer Makes limits, good sense. their home might even no longer exist. Ah. Or if they do come again, mm -hmm. perhaps man will have advanced enough to cope with them and those who made them. Mm. Or words to that effect. Only God knows for sure mm. were Bradford's last words to anyone on this earth. Not quite as pithy as either these curtains go or I do, but still, it was the best he could do. Well, should we eat them or bury them? I vote kidding. <laughs> I vote eat. Eat. Honey, is anything wrong? Yeah. Women are so emotional. Oh, uh, what were you two talking about? Keep watching the skies and watch what you eat, but eat all you take. A bird in the hand is worth... Well, I've been to one state fair or rodeo, and that's the stupidest thing I've ever seen. The end. The end. end Say the end. 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 We're going to leave anyway. End. 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 Ah! <laughs> Here I come, Tommy. Okay, buddy, slide right down. Oh, what in the world are hey, you doing? Hey, hey, whoa, 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 right my hand up oh. here. Thanks, Mike. Oh, yeah. I hope you don't think that was my idea. No, I think I know whose idea it was. Hey, Tom. Hey, Mike, see if you can get her to swallow you. It's really neat. <laughs> oh, this is so embarrassing. I don't look fat, do I? No, Gypsy, you don't look fat. You're a little lumpy, maybe, but not oh. fat. <laughs> oh, this is embarrassing. Come on, hop in and experience the Aliometry Canal in action. It's the ultimate trip. Uh, no thanks. I think I'll pass. Okay. Uh, so to speak. Uh, anyway, we got letters to read here. Yeah. You know, Mike, I, I don't feel very well all of a sudden. I think I'm getting allergic to Tom. Yeah, join the club, Gypsy. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'll go get a tissue, I think. Okay. Uh, Crow, you want to read some letters here? Me? Yeah. May I? Well, you're the only one here. Oh, boy. Thanks for choosing me. You weren't my first choice, but uh, no, I'm kidding. I know. Should. All right, here we go. This one is from, uh, Jay put that on still store there, because this is from, uh, Jason of the Salt Rite of Fun. What the hell does that mean? It says it right there, Jason of the Salt Rite of Fun. And he says, Superman's a comic book, not a graphic novel. Superman's dead. <laughs> he also says, P.S. The robot in the picture is 2XL, and can I be on your show? It's a neat robot, but no, you can't be on our show. Sorry, no, 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 no. Sorry Jason of the Salt Rite of Fun. That's weird. Uh, <laughs> now, this next one is from uh, David Banks. Hello, David. Hello, Dave. 
That's wild, Dave. And he says, I have found that your show is one of the best around. I especially love it when Crow says kitties when dangerous lions are seen. Please ask Crow to say kitties a couple of times for me, Crow. Oh, I don't know, Michael. Little command I just performance for you. Know, every give you a little, little fan request. Oh, little yes, okay. Massage, ready? Kitties. Kitties. <laughs> Well, guess it's back to you, Dr. Clayton Forrester. Are you all right? Mike, you better come and look at this. It burns. Whoa. It burns. Well, until we meet again, on behalf of Frank and myself, here's wishing you whiter whites. Whiter whites. Brighter brights. Brighter brights. May all your rinse cycles be gentle. And may all your troubles come out in the wash. <laughs> Ta-ta!